Hey guys, uh, I recently just uploaded a lore video describing uh, Valkyr, Valkyr Prime, and her Jersemi skin, thinking I was the first to come up with this idea, I mean, uh, at least in a video. It turns out that uh, DK did it one a few days before me, and at the same time, DE released her cinematic video for her Prime without me even knowing about it. So yeah, kind of funny timing. Um, anyway, I want to talk about the cinematic now and describe the lore behind it. Uh, but first I want to complain a bit about the trailer. I won't spend too much time on this, um, but I want to point out the things they got wrong or things I felt they shouldn't have uh, done first. For starters, um, and for people who might not be familiar with my stance on cinematics, I dislike it when DE makes the frames do stuff they can't do in-game, uh, like the Necros Prime trailer. Uh, where n none of his powers work like they do in the actual gameplay, which kind of sucks. I mean, it's a badass trailer, but the fact that Saren and Vauban Prime uh, cinematics were pretty close to what happens in-game. Then DE decides to fluff up the Necros kind of um, annoyed me a bit. They did actually do a pretty good job of keeping Valkyr realistic in this cinematic, however. Um, but I did notice a few things that I wanted to quickly point out. Firstly, the corpus animations of them walking, holding onto the leg, rolling out that machine, that kind of stuff, you can easily disregard. I mean, they have to give some custom animations after all. And I'm mostly concerned about the Warframe and not the other random people uh, in the cinematic anyway. Except for maybe a few minor things, uh, like her quickly transitioning through animations that exist in-game, but in ways you can't actually do in-game. Uh, everything else does seem pretty on point, even to the point of her having a soft landing passive so her falling from a great height uh, doesn't make her kneel at the end of it. Um, as for her powers, all of them seem realistic to how they work in-game, and I really don't have any issues with them, uh, so good on them for that. Humorously though, they chose to make the Cernos Prime fire only one arrow, and I kind of find that extremely funny, since it makes me think that even DE knows that the Cernos Prime firing multiple arrows uh, kind of sucks, although that's probably not why. Um, they probably just did it to make it look better. Otherwise, there'd be uh, two other arrows on either side of the guy, which would be kind of silly. A real complaint, however, is the arrow kills the crewman, and he falls to his death, when in game he actually would have flew backwards, defying gravity, to be pinned by something on the wall. Uh, this is one of the issues I mentioned earlier, where they do have to change how something works in game, uh, to make it seem cool or realistic. Although I guess I can understand why they had to make that change, it's just a minor complaint though. Another couple things is, for whatever reason, Valkyr Prime uses the normal Vanka and not the Vanka Prime uh, when she lands and begins attacking everyone. And the Supras the Corpus dudes use sound nothing like the actual Supra in-game. Um, I'm guessing it was just a mistake, uh, but I found those a bit odd as well. And before I get to the narrator's voice and what it means, I want to talk about the strange Corpus machine they roll out that uses a sentient piece or object to project some sort of disrupting field. Uh, which projects sentient holograms or whatever into the stream itself. Uh, sentients don't currently project any kind of anti-Warframe uh, auras, but this might be a preview of something to come. My guess is it's related to the sentient enemy that they will release eventually, um, that they are talking about a little while ago, that will basically resurrect sentients if you don't kill it quickly enough, and I'm guessing it does so by projecting a sentient healing aura or something, and that is what the beam that hits Valkyr Prime is. Um, but because it only heals sentience, uh, it was damaging and disrupting her. Of course, she then casts Hysteria, which makes her invincible, but yeah. A long, deathless winter has left us numb. A wasted animal within, ugly and gaunt, hibernates beneath our shimmering beauty. Why do these Warframes stir us so? Now this seems to be an Orkin talking about themselves, and how deep down they still have animalistic tendencies, under all their perfect outward appearance, and the Warframes were able to bring out their inner beast in the Tenno, uh, which made the Orkin fear them. They burn with our lost desires, lost instincts. Tenno tamed, but only just. Now this seems to be talking about how the Orkin appeared to be emotionless, cold, and or calculating, and who have lost their primal instincts. It is also referring to how the Warframes were uh, being used to control the Tenno's raging and unpredictable void uh, energy, but only barely, again hinting at their fear of the Tenno. Cursed and hunted as game. Trapped and tortured. Yet they remain. Animals. I don't think they mean the Tenno were actually hunted, 
But this line goes back to the plausible theory that the Tenno were forced into the weaponized version of the transference program. Um, they were stripped of their humanity and brought down to their base, probably once thought lost, animalistic instincts. The fact that we know now that non-Tenno can link with frames, but it causes great strain, probably means that the Tenno themselves were also under great pain and stress linking with these frames, especially since clearly the transference program would also trick the Tenno into thinking that they are the frame they currently control through a lucid dream state. Less than their human seed, gnawing their limbs from the snare, devouring a banquet of suffering, obese with heat and acid and rage. This appears to be talking more about the lore behind the Orkin slash Tenno, just like how the Lotus said that they are more than human, but still once a child. Whether or not the Orkin could have children is unknown, um, at least to me, but this is again rephrasing the fact that the Tenno in the snares, aka the transference program, were causing the Tenno to act violently, irrational, and animalistic. In Valkyr Prime's case especially, it caused her to channel her irrational bestial instincts into pure rage. The Orican realized this and fashioned her frame around the rage she was channeling. And at the end when she kills everyone, the narrator concludes that this is why they will destroy us, referring to the Tenno. That is why they will destroy us. These words appear to be one of the Orican scientists that were working on the transference program, um, and they are noting the primal state transference was causing to the mental state of the Tenno, and how their frames were concentrating their rage and irrationality, and eventually fears that this will cause the Tenno to strike back, which, as we know, is exactly what happened. The Tenno were probably under great pain and stress, mentally and physically, and after being a tool by the Orican to defeat the sentience, they turned their pain and rage toward the people that caused them this pain. But that's just a theory. A Darth theory. 